uh, welcome to the garage where I'm pinched between the door and my truck right now. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the battery of my 2014 Tundra. So uh, from all evidence I can see, this is the original battery that came with the truck. So just seeing that we went on 21 here, um, I'm guessing this is the original battery. They say average maybe four or five years. Obviously you're going to have batteries that sometimes go two or three years or maybe six or seven. But I think around that four or five uh, is kind of the sweet spot for longevity for batteries, at least what uh, I've experienced with uh, some of my vehicles. So uh, long story short, we went up to a cabin a couple uh, weeks ago in northern Wisconsin, and it was, it was cold. Um, I think sing, single digits for most of it. And, uh, you know, my truck's used to just being babied, sitting in the, in the garage at all times. Um, so I was out there and it wasn't being run. We were, you know, having fun outside and on the lake. And I went to start it when it was time to leave on Sunday and I noticed it was uh, kind of a rough start. That's actually, you know, nothing that I'm surprised with, you know, sitting there for a few days in that type of weather, not moving. Um, that's what's going to happen. Um, but I will say throughout this week as I'm bringing the kids to daycare or doing other errands, every time I start the truck, it's just a little slower than usual. Um, you know, this garage is probably 40 degrees right now. It's been in the high 20s, mid 30s outside. Um, so, you know, your vehicle's gonna start a little bit slower than normal, but um, still, uh, it seems like it's just been a little off. Uh, so I wanna check out the battery. Um, and there's, you know, you have a few options. You can either bring it to a place where they can use, you know, special equipment that they have to check the battery and, you know, You'll pay a fee and they'll try to sell you into a battery and that's totally fine. Um, I recommend that route if you're in need of uh, you know, a battery. But uh, also you can do things yourself to check and see if that battery is still healthy or if you're getting uh, kind of the volts you need for the engine or the amps. Um, so what I have here is uh, a fluke meter. Uh, so I just bought one of these yeah, a couple months ago. This is actually something I've always wanted to buy. Um, there's always just those small little projects around the house or working on things where you wish you had something like this, but you know you never had a job big enough where you could justify spending money on one of these. Um, they actually have some sweet units that are probably less than 50 bucks for you know just being able to check things, poking in outlets, whatever the case may be. Um, I decided I'm going to buy a little bit nicer of a unit. Now I, you know, I'll probably have this the rest of my life, and there's just a lot of things I want to learn on it. 90% um, of the stuff I don't know what it does. Uh, but every new project brings a, a reason to take this out and, and learn, and I, you know, that's kind of the name of the game. Um, so this is the Fluke 117, if you're interested. I did a, a bit of research, and uh, it seems like this would fit my needs. So we're going to use this to check uh, the battery. Um, so when you do this, they say, you know, don't run your engine for at least an hour. Um, you know, you have that alternator uh, charging the battery up when you run the, the vehicle. Um, so... I gave it some time. I wish I would have given it all night, um, you know, to check it in the morning, but I don't have the convenience of time like that. So we'll just check it out uh, right now. I think I've had it um, not running for about three or four hours now, so I hopefully uh, that's good enough. But we're going to do two tests. Um, first, I, and uh, I'll turn the camera over and I'll show you. So I have the multimeter um, kind of sitting there on the box over yonder. Um, and I have the leads hooked up to the battery, so I don't think it's rocket science, but the black is ne your negative lead and red is your positive lead. So I'm basically matching, you know, my wires going into the multimeter. Um, and you can tell that if I turn the switch to DC current for a battery, I'm getting 12.35 volts right now. DC current, so you know in your house you have alternating current and battery, this is direct current. Um, but that's not the true test that I'm gonna use right now. Um, what you actually wanna do is turn on the headlights for around two minutes, some say 30 seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go extra long because uh, you know, I'd rather have the test be on the little side of failure more than anything because if I have to replace the battery, I'm gonna replace the battery. You know, I'm not gonna cheat to try to make this test win. But anyway, I'm gonna run those lights for two minutes and just get rid of any surface charge in this battery. Uh, once that is off, then I can take an official reading. And basically, if, it, if I'm at 12.6, which I'm already not, that would mean that I'm fully charged. 12.4, um, you're looking at a 75% charge. 12.2 is a 50% charge and 12 volt is about a 25. And you know, there can be some variance there. Uh, if you're at 11.9 uh, or under, 
uh, that means you basically have no charge. Um, and this is going to depend on the weather, temp, this and that, but you know, around those numbers uh, for estimates. Um, so uh, let's turn on the lights and see what our true number is after that. Around the vehicle. And we're going to set the timer for two minutes. All right, so we did let the battery sit for five minutes after turning on the headlights for two minutes. Just uh, let that battery even out a little bit. So now I'm going to turn this uh, multimeter back on to DC voltage, see where we're landed. And we are at 12.13. So I don't know if that's going to inch up uh, anymore or not. But, um, you know, if we're going by the metrics that I give, I gave earlier, 12.2 uh, represented around 50% charge capacity of the battery. Um, so right now, we're, yeah, we're between probably 25 and 50% on this battery uh, from what I'm seeing. So, um, you know, if this ba battery truly is five or six years old, uh, it's probably getting to the end of its life. Um, so, but just because this is semi-normal doesn't mean that this battery is still, you know, holding and charged the way we want. And I'm sure uh, that the cold cranking amps are um, being affected as well, or CCA. Um, so that is, you know, your ability to start that engine. So typically, you know, people that live in very hot or cold climates, especially up in the north, um, you're going to buy batteries with higher uh, cold crank uh, cranking amps because when that battery is really cold, it needs all the power it can to get that, uh, that engine turning and, and to fire up. So uh, we're going to test that next. Um, and see how we're doing there. Um, so we're gonna have to do a load test uh, and measure the volts. There's not a good way for me to meter how many amps are going through through when I'm uh, cranking this engine. So we're gonna look at the voltage. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the um, camera back on to the stand and I'm gonna fire up the engine. Um, what we're gonna do right now though is I'm gonna hit this min max button. And so right now that's gonna be able to give me the ability to see uh, what that minimum and maximum amp, uh, voltage is on this battery. Uh, so when I start up the engine, you should see it uh, crank up uh, in voltage as that alternator starts charging the battery, but there will be a dip. Uh, sometimes the latency with these machines um, will not show on the display you know, what that lowest point was. So by hitting that min max, I should be able to capture uh, what that was. So let me get this on the stand and uh, we'll start that engine. going to make sure that we don't lose any values on here. So I'm going to go shut the engine off. So again, by hitting that hold uh, after I started the engine, which was after I hit the min max button, that made sure that I didn't lose any of my values during this uh, sequence of events. So right now, I should be able to hit the min max button. So minimum 6.85 that is a number we want to remember average doesn't really matter uh, max 389 also doesn't matter but this is this is the number that we're concerned about so generally manufacturers I believe are going to say that um, you don't want that number under 10 to 10.5 volts um, anything under 9.5 9.6 somewhere in that region that's when you uh, know that you're uh, messing with disaster or this this battery is going downhill. Um, so this actually confirms all of my thoughts. This battery uh, has not enabled my truck to start properly the whole last week. And again, I was hoping it would not be below 10, 10.5 volts, but we had a major dip at 6.85. 
which is under you know the lowest thresholds that I've seen online, you know, 9.5, 9.6 volts. So this means that we will be getting a new battery and we'll go from there. Well, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, if in case you ever need to diagnose your own battery. Um, again, highly recommend getting a multimeter like this. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things with vehicles, anything electrical, uh, household. Uh, you'll be surprised once you start diving in the home projects. But yeah, sad news today that that were indeed confirmed that this battery is no good. Um, I'm sure if I brought it somewhere, they could do even you know more accurate load testing on it. And it could be something to consider. But again, knowing that this battery is probably five or six years old, it, it doesn't have life left. Um, there's nothing that's going to bring it back now. Um, and I could keep it on trickle chargers overnight and play games like that, but it's not gonna be worth it at this point, and I definitely don't wanna be stranded somewhere in winter, especially with the family on board. Um, I do carry jumper cables and one of those new lithium uh, jumpers, uh, which I also bought for my wife to keep in her vehicle, uh, just so you're never stranded. They're getting so cheap nowadays, and I highly recommend those. Um, so I feel a little safe, but at the same time, this is cheap insurance just to go somewhere and just swap out the battery. So that's what I'm gonna do. Thanks for watching. Okay, here. So when I say go, you're gonna start the truck, mm -hmm. count to five max after it starts and then shut it back off. Go.